are taking a drive on the wild side. Timo is my chauffeur today. And the wild side is the part of my property that we never really go into because, well, it's wild and there's snakes and things. <laughs> and some chickens apparently too. Um, but today we have something that uh, we've been needing to do for a while, but it's been raining. So come along with us and see this very interesting process that we're about to go through. Well, there's only so far the UTV can go on the wild side, then it's by foot. Now, I've been down in this area one time, and that was when I was purchasing the property, like, jeez, oh, well over a year ago now, and I walked the fence line with the surveyor. But I haven't really been down in this area since. Cacao. We have tons of cacao trees back here. And if you're not familiar, that's what chocolate comes from. So we should be having a big harvest in November of cacao. We'll video that whole process too. Okay, we've made it to our destination. It wasn't too terribly bad. Um, so I'm trying to see where our fence line is. I don't really see it from here. It's over here somewhere. I don't know where, but so if you see what Timo has there, he has a motosierra. Actually, he has dos motosierras, um, chainsaws. And one thing that we are very, very aware of is protecting this beautiful area and not chopping things down randomly and killing things just because they're in our way. But this is a laurel tree. You can see up there where it forks, uh, and it's dead. So the laurel tree is a good, um, fairly hardwood, and we're going to be able to make some lumber out of it. So otherwise, in, uh, in not too long, probably during rainy season, uh, it would end up falling down this hill because it's, it's on a, a very steep hillside right here. So it would probably fall down. Uh, on its own anyway, and then start rotting. So it's better for us to go ahead and harvest it now and get some use out of it. Popsy's in charge of chainsawing this morning. He's directing. He has. He's. He's into this whole movie thing. So he's told me exactly where to stand and when. tree felon that I've ever attended. Woo. Exactly where you want it. It went right where you want it, Bobsy. Good job. Okay. Yes, this clear part is not good. Okay. The darker part is mm -hmm. what good you see. 
Uh, okay. Yes. Ah. That's what's still good. Okay, so when you're making the lumber, then you don't use this part. No. You just use that part. Right. Okay. Ooh, there's lots of ants in there. Is that termites? Termites. Oh, ugh. So it was either the termites take it or we take it, yeah? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so Timo is clearing the vines off of the tree. Brian is trying to look productive as well. <laughs> and basically what they're going to do is we're going to cut boards uh, and then the guys will haul it out of here back up to the UTV. I mean, it's... It's a lot of work, and I will tell you, when you see the boards that come off of this, you're going to be amazed. And that's why I wanted to film this, because the first time they brought a board up, because we, we dropped, uh, we didn't drop a tree, there was a tree that was already dropped uh, a couple weeks ago, and they brought some lumber up from it. Like, I was stunned. It's amazing what they can do with a chainsaw. So we'll be showing you that process here in just a minute, once they get everything cleared away. So they're measuring 12-foot lengths right now. There's one 12 foot section. All right. So basically this was about mid section up on the tree and what we're looking for is all the good hardwood coming out all the way to the edge. After we finish with all the other pushing work, you have to make dry wood over here. Oh, there's another one? Yes, a bit smaller than this one. Okay. I'm sure if you can take out anything, but you can just cut it down to see. Okay. Yeah, more and leave it there. Yeah. And the next small one and this way. Oh, okay. Popsy knows all the trees on this property, where they are and what they're doing. Okay, so they put some wedges underneath um, that side of the tree so they can roll it without it rolling down <laughs> into the canyon here. Whoa! Were you supposed to do that, Brian? These gringos, you can't, you can't do anything with them. They're a mess. <laughs> That's what we're trying to prevent from happening to this one. I tell you what, jungle tools, it's all about using what you have, not running to Home Depot and getting something. Oops, spider on me. So what are we doing with the string, Popsy? Uh, this is to mark, make the line. Okay. That I can follow with the, the chainsaw. Okay. And keep it straight. Get it straight. Okay. So I square it. Mm -hmm. And then I turn it this way, and I mark it one inch. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. And this, this is a battery, the old battery. Mm -hmm. We take out the, the black part, what inside. Yeah. Throw it in in this bottle and mix it with water. And it's turned to a, a ink and it's marked. And after it dries, it's rain and you don't wash it off. What? 
Nice. It's like a jungle sharpie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so smart. They, they, sell, they, they do sell everything. Powder for right. Market. But they wash away. Yes, they wash away. Look at that, what they're doing. It, it's it's my favorite tool, really, is what it is. It's the chalk line. Mm -hmm. Except it's made with battery acid, I guess. Mm -hmm. And water. Ah, see, he's saying that this is Bocas Panama science here. So <laughs> he knows I'd like to do science. <laughs> oh, whoa, that was so cool. <laughs> Jungle snap line. Crazy. Wow. Okay, then I just take off the two sides and then turn it back this way. Yep. So smart. Are you going to save that uh, live edge slab? No, on that one. That big one down there. Oh, okay. Cut it out of that. What about this one? Um, this one. Uh, Seems like you do something, do with, something with it. Yeah. It's starting to look more like lumber. At least in that shelf. Mm-hmm. One looking mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Look at that, guys. Bam. Jungle lumber yard right there. All right, we're back down with our first load of wood. And you can see, I mean, it's amazing. It, they do this with a chainsaw. Like, it, I mean, it's wood, so I mean, it's not smooth like silk, obviously, but it is smooth for doing it with a chainsaw. And why is that? It's because Popsy, you will not even believe. Get a load of this. So Popsy takes his chainsaw chain and then he has a couple different types. He has one for just like cutting through the tree like that just to make the rough cuts. And then he goes back with a file on another chain and he files the teeth, each tooth on the chain in a different way. And that way that he does it gives you the smooth cut so you get the boards and they're not rough cut. Like the stuff they do in this jungle, they don't play around. So anyway, Brian is taking this first load in. We're putting it into this building uh, to uh, let it dry um, because it kind of has to, I mean, maybe cure might be a word, but dry basically. Um, and sit in here because if you work with wood that isn't completely dry, then it, um, it will shrink uh, after you build with it. So that can create a problem. But anyway, that's just one load off of that one tree. And that is how we go to the lumber yard in the jungle. So Brian has created kind of a drying rack for the lumber uh, here in uh, in our like like we live in that building over there, and then this building is here. It's un it's what we call the unfinished building. Basically, it's kind of turning into a workshop at this point, <laughs> as you can see. But um, so what he's done is taken. Uh, and put little sticks in between each one so we can get airflow in between the boards. And this is what we've taken off of two trees. One that was already dead and down on the ground. And then the one that we showed cutting down earlier. But I mean, look at this lumber. It's, I mean, it's beautiful. So Brian is out this morning with his new toy, his DeWalt planer that we brought from the States because we're learning by everything in the States. Uh, so from the 
tree that we cut down, fast forward, everything's been drying, and we got about 20 boards off of that one dead tree. So, Brian has been playing around and he was like, you have to come over here and see this. Okay, so this is like the before shot. I'll try to get in there. And it's really rough. You know, the chainsaw marks in it. Chainsaw and marks and things like that. Even though for a chainsaw, that's pretty darn good. Okay, show us the side you put through the planer. <laughs> it's like night and day. I mean, he's saying he's probably not even going to have to sand it. It's so smooth. Very so, happy with that planer. Yeah, so we're really excited. We're going to actually use this to make a door frame for our closet. Other benefit from planting our own lumber, because it's not treated, we can then take this sawdust and put it right into our compost pile. So we don't waste anything. It's, it's awesome. The light here is not so great, but um, Brian created this entire jam for our closet out of our lumber. This is lumber that we purchased that we did the rest of this closet was with this used to be a bathroom. Brian created this really beautiful shelf for the bathroom with like a hand towel hook on it from that lumber. I mean it looks store bought. It's beautiful. So you can see some of the boards behind us here. And again, this is just lumber that we are harvesting from our own property, only from dead trees. So maybe they're standing like the one that you saw earlier in the video. And we've also harvested from uh, one tree that has fallen. Between the two, we have over 40 boards. Pretty amazing, especially considering that the price of lumber has been going up so much recently. So if you want to see more of these fun videos as kind of how we are utilizing the resources we have on our property to build with or live or whatever it might be, just using those resources, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. And I'll see you next Friday.